Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with us, we have Judy Hoberman. She's a TEDx speaker, a trainer and coach who speaks on women in sales and the sales process to working, communicating and building relationships with women in business. She has been dubbed the gender expert on Fox Business News and known as the accountability coach. But I will let her tell you more about herself and her work and what she's working on right now. Judy? Good morning from Dallas, Texas. I'm so excited to be here and join you. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to all of your people. So yes, I am a trainer. I am an author. But most of all, I, I try to educate and empower women so that they're able to do what they truly want to do with who they truly want to do it with. So that what that means is I want to make sure that women have the tools to succeed, whether it's in corporate America or entrepreneur or wherever they want to be, I want to be able to help them and promote them. So that is, I am a speaker, I have a radio show host, a radio show as well, and I'm an author. And I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, one of the, the interesting things that we talked about before the interview uh, was our, uh, what I thought was a contrasting life experience. And I, I found that it wasn't that different, actually. Um, I, she, uh, Judy, uh, talks about in her, um, in her TED talk about her experience, about her story. And it's, it's really fascinating. And I was thinking about the fact that my story is actually the other way around. And uh, the interesting thing that, uh, the way we experience experience the story was uh, actually pretty similar. Can you tell us a few uh, ideas from the story? Yeah, so my story really is about being prejudged, and that was what my TED Talk was about. Sometimes when we prejudge people, we miss the greatest opportunity that's right in front of us. And for me, I was always told that I'm pretty and nothing more than that. And my father actually told me that I would never amount to be anything other than pretty, so I should be in the beauty pageants. And I couldn't understand why somebody who was supposed to love me so much would make me feel like I was nothing. And I had to struggle with that my entire life. And so people that say, well, at least you were told you were pretty, it's just as hard being told that you're not pretty. Because you are, you're put into this vacuum, this silo where nobody really helps you or, or wants to be around you because they think you have it all going on already, that you're always popular and that you're, you're part of the, the A team and, and you're not. And you struggle with this all along. So imagine being a female in business who already has to overcome being a female in business and always being told you're never going to be anything because all you are is pretty. And so when you and I were chatting about that, our stories aren't different. It, the topic is different, but it's the same thing. It's that same struggle with how do you become something wonderful for other people when you don't feel like you're anything to yourself? Hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's wonderful. So I was uh, sharing with uh, Judy my experience, the fact that I've struggled a lot of my life with acne and uh, the fact that for me it wasn't really easy to uh to interact with the world because of it and uh interestingly enough i i was thinking about the people that are that are not struggling with this and that are uh like they look good and everything that it, they just have it all and they just don't have um the problems that uh that i used to have and and everything and uh interestingly enough <laughs> we the our experience wasn't uh, so different even no. though even though uh, the uh, the way it manifested somehow in the world it it was a, a little bit different so i think this this is quite interesting interesting and if you're whether you're on one side or on the other 
um, I think it might be easier for you to relate with with other people, even from different sides of, of the story. And, you know, if you think about it, when you ask people what they struggle with, it's always something about, you know, how they physically feel, physically look or internally feel or whatever that is. And, but and when you get the story, when you actually get the story, we're all the same. We're all mm-hmm. the same. There's actually um, there's a video. I don't know who put it out, but they have all these people standing around in a big circle. And the person that's in charge of this circle will say, okay, and they all look different. You know, there's, there's rough guys and there's pretty girls and there's everybody. And so the, the man said, the first thing he says is, okay, so how many of you were the class clown? And so they all, you know, whoever was the class clown goes into the middle and you have the tough guy and the pretty girl and the nurse. Okay. And they go back. Okay. So how many of you struggled with whatever, you know, drugs or whatever. And it turns out that no matter how different we all look, we all have something that ties us together. And that's, that's the beauty of, you know, o- opening yourself up to other people. Because the very first time I told my story, I couldn't even breathe because mm-hmm. I remembered how painful it was. And the people would say to me, oh, I wish my father would have said I'm pretty because all he said was I was stupid. And so, oh. you know, you, ha- you have all of these things and, and how do you turn out? It's, it's how you react to it. I mean, look, you and I are here and we're in one piece and we both struggled and yet, you know, we're talking to millions of people. So obviously we're pretty cool. We're pretty much more than enough. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And we're doing this in spite of the, uh, the struggle, in spite of the situation that we were in and we, we just continued. And I think this is the situation with, uh, with many great people in the world, like even, uh, Anthony Robbins or uh, Oprah or people, we if you know their stories, you know that uh, they have struggled a lot uh, in their life, especially when they were younger. And um, the fact that the difference between most people and them is the fact that they overcame their struggle and they they wanted to to be a light for other people as well. And uh, this is this is what we. I think we both want people to to be inspired to do to to continue to be a light even though they they are they have their their own struggle right now right right but you never want to forget where you came from because that's totally. what makes you who you are and then you're grateful for everybody else that's actually entered into your life so I always tell people don't forget where you came from and don't forget who brought you to the dance so mm-hmm. who, whatever whatever that is whoever that is cuz I know who who helped me and I know who didn't and so you decide who are you going to play with? Who's in your sandbox? And I'm, I truly am grateful every single day for the people that, that I'm surrounded by and the people that don't want the best for me. I, they don't, I don't play with them anymore. <laughs> I'm, old, I'm old enough to say I'm done with you. You know, I, I have to get rid of this because it's toxic to you. So that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So by the way, what does gratitude mean for, for you, Judy? So gratitude, I mean, there's so many different pieces of gratitude for me. Um, gratitude for me, there's, a, there's a, a feeling that you get when somebody offers you assistance. And for me, I like to give. I like to make sure that I give with no, ex- no expectation of anything in return. And I actually give my time. And I think that is our most valuable resource. I mentor a lot of young women and I volunteer because to me, there's nothing better than giving your time. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm very grateful for the time that I have. I'm very grateful to my family and my children and, and my friends. But I also like to give in return. And to me, that's, that's truly what gratitude is. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Because there is this part of gratitude that's um, inside that you feel. And another part that <clears throat> there is actually a study on this. Um, that was uh, funded by the uh, Templeton Foundation uh, that says that most of Americans, they think that uh, they are grateful, uh, but a, a very small amount actually express their gratitude. And uh, it's something that people want and need. And it's very important for people to receive appreciation, but not so many people actually do it. 
Well, I always find that here, um, you know, November is Thanksgiving. And so everybody starts November 1st. I'm going to be thankful and grateful and whatever. It's not just the time around Thanksgiving. You have to be grateful. You have to wake up and you have to be grateful. And yes, we all complain about a lot of things, but when you think about it, we have to be very grateful for what, we're, what we have, where we live, what, what country we live in, the people that surround us. You have to be grateful because if you take it for granted, it goes away. It will go away. And you'll be surrounded by the things that, you know what they say that sometimes that the, it's the little things that turn into the big things. So when you're grateful for a lot of things, you know, sometimes you think about, oh my God, my nose is all stuffed up. I can't believe I take breathing for granted. That's mm -hmm. how silly it sounds. But we do, we take a lot of things for granted. You know, we went on vacation and we were in another country. And when we looked around, my heart hurt. It hurt because here were these beautiful homes and resorts and here was, you know, poverty to the 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 on steroids and mm -hmm. all we wanted to do was we wanted to forget being on vacation and we wanted to go and help these children and these young adults and and entrepreneurs and things like that so you take so much for granted until you realize it's out there where you can't take it for granted so to me i mean i just it, it's it's eye-opening yeah totally and I, I always like to to use this example because I, I think it's really easy to relate. Like um, these days I've been sick and uh, the sense of smell and uh, uh, my taste buds weren't working. And <clears throat> after uh, getting back to them, it was just amazing to be able to smell everything and even the, the smell of fresh air. I, I don't know if you if you know how it is, but when you smell the, the smell of fresh air is like oh my god this is amazing and it's right? something simple that we do every day and we take for granted but uh, after you have just a few days in which you you don't have it at all you it's it's a big difference like you appreciate it so much more right absolutely totally agree with that yeah so I was wondering if you have uh, some words of wisdom, a quote that you really love about gratitude. I do have one. And, and the reason I love it so much is because as a woman, um, most women use this word enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not whatever enough it is. And so the quote is gratitude, gratitude turns when we have uh, gratitude turns when we have what we have into enough. Mm -hmm. So if you, so for me, I've always been told I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. So when I'm grateful for something that turns, whatever is in front of me into more than enough. And then mm -hmm. I know that I'm also more than enough. So when you think about that, I mean, we are prejudged on so many different issues and challenges. And if you're just grateful for little things in front of you, all of a sudden you start to feel good about yourself and the confidence and the self-worth and everything else. So I truly believe that gratitude does help you realize that this is more than enough. Wow. That's really beautiful. And I can see how, how that works because when you, when you see things outside of you that are enough, when, when, you, when you look back inside, you, you see the same. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is that in life, we have all kinds of challenges and uh, all kinds of problems that uh, need to be sorted out. And sometimes we feel down and it's hard to be grateful. What do you do when it's hard to be grateful? Uh, sometimes I want to just pull the blankets over my head and say, <laughs> I can't, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. But then I start to think about what's around me. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's music that inspires me and makes me get up. Sometimes it's a book. Sometimes it's, you know, getting onto social media and connecting with people. But I always try to go back to who I am and what's important to me. So I know my family is important. My husband is important. And so I start to think about what would happen if they weren't here. And then I'm very grateful for the fact that they are here. You know, you think about what's going on in the world and you think about that in a moment, your life can change. And, you know, we struggle everywhere in the world that somebody somewhere can just say, okay, I'm going to take you out. Mm 
And I think about my children traveling and I think about my husband and, and if I didn't have them, how horrible that would be. So I always go back to what's right in front of me. And that just helps me get out of, you know, that funk or that mm -hmm. feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And uh, I love the fact that you mentioned a, a few ways because it's, it doesn't actually work all the time. Uh, the, the same thing doesn't actually work all the time. And uh, it's great that you have like uh, an arsenal of, of things that you can use when, when, um, when you're not at your best. Um, so when it comes to, to gratitude, many people use the word, but don't actually live it mm -hmm. and don't, don't actually understand it. Uh, when was the time that you actually began to, to feel the gratitude, to understand not just the concept, but to actually uh, live it, to feel it? I think it was more about when I started in the business world, because by that time, I already had all of this negative stuff built up inside of me. And mm -hmm. then when somebody said to me, oh, my goodness, you changed my life or you made such a big difference. And I started to think, you know what, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'm pretty good at helping people. So, and that's when I started to feel the gratitude of, of somebody pouring into me. And so then I was able to do the same for others because before that I was more closed off. I had a wall in front of me and nobody was getting in because I could not bear to be hurt. And so one little by little, that wall started coming up. It was like a curtain and I would let people in a little bit and I'd say, okay, that's safe. And, and then all of a sudden it was the other way around. I was so grateful to everything and everybody and everybody knew it. I, I was in insurance for a long time and I, I got to a point where I was so excited about helping people in insurance. I mean, seriously, who's excited? <laughs> and people would say to me when I would call them on the phone, they would say, I don't even care what you're selling. I want to see you because you're so excited. And I was always grateful for every one of my clients, whether I sold them or I didn't. I didn't care. I just wanted to help people. And, and that's how, you know, my career actually started because I protected families. And who's, how could you be more grateful than that? And so people would laugh and they go, you're so excited about insurance. I said, I'm excited about life. You know, I just want to help people. And so I, I think it's when I started in my career where people said to me, you're pretty awesome. And then I started believing it. And that's when it all turned around. That's so wonderful. And I love the fact that uh, you, you told us how it was for you in that situation. Like the fact that um, you began to actually take it in because it's, uh, it's also important for us to, uh, to take in the gratitude that others uh, give to us. Like many times when, uh, when it comes to uh, people expressing their gratitude, we tend to, uh, to not to reject it, but to, to avoid it somehow. Um, and I think that yep, yep. making this a flow, like accepting the gratitude from other people and accepting the fact that you did do something right and you did do something uh, amazing for the other person is something that's very important. But, you know, it's interesting because I would hear people say when they would give in a compliment, I would hear them say, I receive that. And I thought, well, that's pretty corny. How could you just receive that? Yeah, you know, because exactly. I was so, I was so closed off. <laughs> and then one day I decided I'm going to see how I could receive this because this is just like, you know, it was too corny for me. And somebody paid me a compliment and I'm not good with compliments. And so if you paid me a compliment, I would counteract it. If you said, oh, I like your dress, I'd say, oh, this whole thing, you know, I could never just say thank you. And mm -hmm. so somebody paid me a compliment and, about my training and I looked at them and I said, I received that. And when I said that, it was, the, it was weird for me to say it, but I actually felt it. And so then I thought, that's why people say it, because you actually feel it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, it's an interesting concept. And I think the older you get, the more you're grateful for things that didn't make sense when you were younger. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. a lot older now, and I am truly grateful for the little things that happen. And I'm, you know, I just, I, I truly am. When I was, you know, in my 20s, nothing. I wasn't grateful for anything. I was like, whatever, <laughs> you know, I'll work hard if it happens. Great. And if it doesn't, that's okay. But um, yeah, I think as you get older, it's more of a life experience too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, totally. And um, can you tell tell us one of, of of your stories about gratitude from when you were younger or from when you actually discovered gratitude? Well, when I was younger, I wasn't, I don't think I ever really felt gratitude. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But when I was older, I remember there was a woman and I re kind of remember her, but not really. And recently she had brought me in to do speaking and she introduced me. And what she said was that when she heard me speak five years before that, um, I changed her life. And, and even though there was a big audience, she felt like I was speaking directly to her. And so she introduced me and then I had to get up and do my presentation. And I, I was so overwhelmed. It, it, I can't even explain it, but my heart was so full that I wasn't sure I could do my presentation because wow. it was a complete a shocker for me. Like you never know who you inspire. You don't know this. And when somebody tells you from left field and you're thinking, wow, I didn't know that. And so for me, that was like a, uh, an aha moment about gratitude. And so I got up and of course I was crying, you know, that's just how I am. And I thanked her and I couldn't even believe what she was saying about me because how would you know that, you know? So I think that gratitude comes, doesn't mean it's immediate. It can come years later from the most unexpected sources. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I, I didn't think about gratitude as a as a long term um thing <laughs> somehow but it's beautiful that it it really is like this and uh yeah you you never know what who you inspire and what impact you you may have in in uh, people's lives like what what i know is and i i'm really grateful for this is the fact that some of the listeners of uh, the gratitude podcast I know that uh, have used one of uh, some of the things that they have they have learned on the podcast with uh, their children, mm -hmm. and I find this amazing. And I'm thinking about how how great it will be for them to to have this habit since they uh, they are young. You know, uh, that's that's just. And I'm thinking how how a world with uh, more people that are grateful uh, in it from a young age would, would be so. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. pretty excited about that. And then uh, you think about the fact that we're together. I mean, I'm very grateful for Teresa for introducing us because we're across the world and we're live. Yeah. And so, you know, how awesome is that, that my people will hear what you're saying, your people will hear what I'm saying, and somebody somewhere needed to hear what we had to say today. And I always truly believe there's somebody that message had to, had to get onto somebody's ears, and I do believe it could be in your world or my world or our world. Yeah, totally, totally, and it could be us as well. Right, like, exactly. Well, our message this morning. I mean, I think that that was pretty eye-opening for both of us. Yeah, totally, totally. I love it. So, um, getting back to your old self, uh, mm -hmm. like your old self, but uh, when you were younger. Um, you say that it, you weren't the, the grateful uh, kind of person. What would you tell your, your younger self right now about gratitude? What I would tell my younger self that gratitude doesn't have to come in the form of a compliment or something positive. Gratitude comes in the form of listening and being open to what people are saying to you and about you. And you decide what you're going to keep and what you're going to get rid of. Because mm -hmm. I kept all of that for try to decide if this was truly me or not and find out ways that I can be more open to opportunities. Because I know for a fact I let lots of opportunities pass me by, even as a little one. So I would tell my younger self, be open and only take in what you feel is you know, your authentic self. Otherwise, you need to just you know, park it and rewind the tapes and go forward. Mm -hmm. that's wonderful that's wonderful because even if we we do receive some some positive feedback it might not be like you're, you're pretty but just that you know that right it's positive on 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 the one side but it's not so positive on the other you know 
Right. And, and if uh, somebody would have said you're pretty awesome or you're pretty intelligent, <laughs> you know, add something to that pretty. It's not just pretty. You know, you're pretty amazing. I mean, that would have that that would have changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And I think that this can be useful for for our listeners. So uh, to to appreciate what you receive, um, but to to take in what you feel is right for you. Mm hmm. Right, right. I have actually <laughs> struggled with this a little bit um, with with material things. Like my mother is is uh, very sweet that she's sending me all kinds of things, and uh, I'm grateful that she does. But sometimes she she doesn't send me the things that I that I like or that I would use, you know. And uh, there has always been an inner conflict uh, with me about this, like okay, I'm grateful that I'm receiving from, from her, uh, but some things I just don't, don't like and I, it's hard for me to take them in, you know? And I think this, this works well in, in this situation as well, right? Yeah, and you know what, you, you, could, you could look at it two different ways. You can, if you have the relationship with your mom and you could say, oh, I love that you sent me this shirt um, you know, it's funny because I used to wear that kind of shirt, but now I wear this kind. So mm -hmm. if you could tell her that the other thing is it's a gift from your mom. End of story. Even yeah. if you put it away, because when your mom is no longer here, you'll go back and say, I hated that shirt, but it's from my mom. And so yeah. you have to look at it two different ways because my mom's been gone for 24 years. And I, I mean, she sent me things that I like, where was she thinking? But in, <laughs> but in reality, I would take anything right now, any, any kind of gift she could give me. So I, that's what I'm saying. Either be able to have that conversation like I used to wear that, but I'm doing this now, or just take it and thank her and just put it aside. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And it's, and it's true. It's true. Because I've been, I've been raised by, by my uh, grandmother and she, she passed away um, eight years ago. And uh, yeah, I can, I can totally relate to that. I always remember the things that she, she bought mm -hmm. me. And uh, it's beautiful that I remember her when, when I wear them or when uh, I use those things. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, getting back to, uh, to gratitude and our, <laughs> our actual interview, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, is there anything in your life that you're, you're doing right now to, to help you stay grat grateful consistently? Like uh, do you have an activity, a practice or something that you, that you do to, to be grateful and to stay grateful? One of the things I do every single day, and I know this will sound silly as gratitude, is I, I post on social media every single day, every single morning and sometimes at night, and it's usually how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, I will get people that say to me, how did you know I was feeling like that? Mm -hmm. And it's really how I'm feeling. So I very, I, you know, I, and that to me is gratitude because yes, they're thanking me, yes, I'm receiving it, but I'm also helping them. And so that's, I know it sounds silly that social media could be a form of gratitude, but it truly is when people react to you. Mm -hmm. And because I'm so consistent, when I don't have something up by six or seven in the morning, people will contact me and ask me if I'm okay. So uh -huh. I know, so I know they're watching me and I know they're, they're looking for me. And so, I mean, as silly as it sounds, that's, that's a form of gratitude. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I I always loved this question because um, I I tended I, I used to think that uh, I know all of the things that all of the all of the practices that one can do to uh, enhance gratitude. But another part of me is very curious and knows that I I don't know everything, and I always learn new things when when it comes to practicing gratitude and all kinds of things that I I couldn't 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 have thought about you know so uh we are uh, nearing the end of our time together can't and, believe it <laughs> yeah and um i want to ask you if you if you have a few people that uh, you're very grateful for and that you would like to mention um i'm grateful to my children and my bonus children 
my husband's children that when we got married, they're, they're four amazing adults and I love them dearly and they just bring joy to my heart. I'm grateful to my husband because he's my biggest supporter. And I'm grateful to people like Teresa, who has been an amazing um, supporter, encourager, and friend. Um, and, you know, and I have some very close friends that I just, they know when, when I need something. It's not like, I, you know, I'm not asking for money or anything. Sometimes they just need to hear me, like my yeah. friend Karen and my friend Alexis. You know, all I have to do is just say something and they're, they're like, they're right there. So, oh, yeah, so I, you know, yeah. I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to you for having, giving (laughs) me the opportunity to be here. Sure. Sure. I love it. I love it. Also, I know that you're, you're writing a book or you, you actually published it or what's the situation right now? So the book is finished. It's being, it's, it's with the designer right now being laid out. Um, I gave a sneak peek. So this is actually the, the cover of it and it's called walking on the glass floor. So it's really about women that are in leadership or emerging leaders. You know, we talk about the glass ceiling. This is the glass floor. We are here. We want to stay here and we want to bring more women in. So it's for women that lead and it's also men that champion women. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the soft launch will be in another couple of weeks and then the big launch will be in a couple of months, but it's, there's a very big give back, very big gratitude for it. And it's all about getting the book into hands of millions of women. Mm-hmm. I know that you have a, a chapter on uh, gratitude and generosity also in the book. Yes, yes, that's, that's big. That's huge. And part of it is because I'm such a big proponent of mentorship. And I really believe that giving your time is almost is the most important and most expensive commodity that you can give someone. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about generosity, a lot of people think it's money. It has nothing to do with money. Yes, you can give money, but it's really, you know, heart and soul and um, time. Yeah, this is wonderful. All right. Thank you, Judy, so much for, for being here with us and for sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom and experience. Um, I loved having you on and, uh, Yeah, if you have a a final message for our listeners. Just wake up every morning and be grateful for what's in front of you. And if the day doesn't go as you planned, it's a lesson. Just learn from the lesson and go forward. Don't hold it like maybe the two of us did for such a long time. Get rid of it because life is just too short. And before you know it, you know, so just, just stay focused. Awesome. Awesome. By the way, uh, where can we find you? Where can uh, we see your book and your work and everything? So my website is www.sellinginaskirt.com. I'm all over social media at Selling in a Skirt or Judy Hoberman. And I respond all the time to anybody that reaches out to me. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much once again for being here with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. (laughs) 